Hey, I'm telling you, this guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What, the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Come comedian on. Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Myron J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. we got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Boo. 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 Welcome to the Frank Prince Show. I'm your host, Frank Prince. A little recap from last week's show. I had special. I had um, James Young, a Frank Sinatra impersonator. Thank you for coming out and being on my show. We had a blast. And right now, I have special guest comedian Mike Keegan. How are you, Frank? Good. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you for having Thank me back. And thank you for coming back. My pleasure. Tell everybody where you're from. From East Meadow, uh, Long Island boy. Uh, born and raised there. And, uh, you know, I'm traveling around now doing some comedy. And how'd you get in comedy? It's always been something I always wanted to do. It's always been in the back of my mind. You know, when I was growing up, my father, you know, he would work late, so he'd come home at night, and we'd always watch all the old, the Richard Jenny, all the old, a lot of the old you know, stand-up spotlights and stuff. So it's always something that I, you know, I was always the funny guy in my group. And then uh, about two years ago, I got laid off my job. And I said, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. I didn't want to regret not ever trying it. So I, you know, I went down to Governor's, got up on stage there, and been off and running ever since, pretty much. How does that work? Uh, well, what happened was uh, I saw, I was at a comedy show that I was there to see uh, um, uh, Eddie, Mur uh, Eddie Murphy's brother, Charlie Murphy, and I saw that they have classes there with John Trucin. So uh, the thing with the classes is you get you know two two uh, appearances at Governors. So I'm like, all right, that's the best way for me to probably get on stage. So I took the classes with John Trucin, and uh, and you know, I got on stage there. I had a bunch of my friends come out to my first two shows, and you know now they have mics, open mics there after that, and I've been getting my name known over there. And how does that work with the open mic? Uh, well, once a month, each club that Governors owns, they own McGuire's, Governors, and the brokerage, once a month, each of them has an open mic on like a Friday night at 1030 after their main show. And anyone who wants to get on stage, you can come down, you, you bring six of your friends, and they'll give you seven minutes to, uh, to do your thing. And now you're getting booked at other venues? Now I'm getting booked at other venues. Uh, you know, I've been all over the city. Uh, the newest place, Ricochet's in uh, Lindenhurst, uh, which you've been too kind to me. I've been I've been there the last three weeks, four weeks, ever since they opened, and that place is amazing. It's it's uh, it's been the best thing that's happened to us for a while. Well, I believe in giving people a shot. Yeah. There's a lot of people that hasn't been recognized that I'm about giving, supporting, and helping others. And I give people like yourselves and a bunch of other comedians yeah. that felt left out and. They're going in circles. Exactly. And I'll bring them on stage. I have nothing to lose. Yeah, and you've, you've been doing a great job. You and, and Joe, Thank the you. owner over there. And the place is phenomenal. First, the last few shows we put on there, these are some of the best comics you're going to see around here that, you, you know, that, that you'd usually pay. We had two headliners on the last show. We had George Gallo and Tom Daddario. The people are paying $25 a head to see. There's no admission at this place. You know, you're not paying a cover to get in. It's a really nice new place, and uh, the food there is amazing. The food there is phenomenal. All the comics, you know, love the, the mozzarella wedges they have there. But these are some of the best shows you're going to see at, at this place. Some great comics, and you guys have been really good to us. It's 543 West Hoffman Avenue in Lindenhurst. Yep. Um, open mics are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays are comedy shows. No admission. You know, yeah. we just got established, so. Yeah, you know. then, I mean, the buzz is around, you know, everyone, everyone's talking about it now. And uh, it's this week, and I'm lucky enough I'll be hosting the open mic, and I'll be, uh, I'll be hosting one of, the th one of the Wednesday or Thursday shows. And doing and, more. Uh, yeah, and doing, yeah. doing a lot more. We've got some great comics coming down. Wednesday, uh, you asked me to, to put a couple comics together. i got some great guys coming down. i got, I got uh, Tim Thompson, Jess Colazzo, uh, Charlie Blakeman from R.C. Dugan's might come down. And uh, you got some great guys. 
See, I'm trying to get people to learn the business too. <laughs> yeah, as well, exactly. it's become a. Yeah, you know, I've taken a lot of steps forward in the last few weeks. So, yeah, it's a big step for everybody. Yeah, definitely. And everybody's excited. Absolutely. That's what it should be. Having it is. fun. And it's like a family there. You know, I walked in. Uh, I walked in on Thursday, and Joe, the owner, he's like, he's like, where were you last night? We missed you. You know, you don't get that at other places. You know, I was hosting an open mic that, that night, so I couldn't make it down the ricochets. But it's nice to walk in. Andre, the bouncer, you know, he gives me a big hug, and all the bartenders know us now. All the, you know, great wait staff over there. So it's it's really awesome. It's like a big family. That's why I do different things. Exactly. Because I'm just like everybody else. <laughs> still, where am I going? I'm still going. In circles. <laughs> so what else is on your agenda? Um, just uh, been writing a lot. I'm going to be at the, uh, the stand. I'm, I'm going to be there August 26th. Uh, it's my favorite club in the city, a really nice new club out in the city. And uh, I'll be there doing one of Jeff Lawrence's shows. He's, uh, he's putting together a lot of good shows out there. Last time I was there, I mean, I was on stage with, uh, with Nick DiPaolo, Janine Garofalo. It's just a really cool place there. And uh, other than that, just, just writing and uh, trying to get my name out there as much as I can. What was your most embarrassing moment? On stage? On stage. <laughs> Everybody has that. I, uh, <laughs> I guess my most embarrassing moment, there was, a, uh, there was a couple in the front row, and they were arguing. I'm in the middle of my set, and they're arguing. And all of a sudden, the wife runs out of the building, and her drunk husband goes to chase her, and he falls flat on his face right in front of me. And this guy, he was, he was really, he was completely drunk. Falls right flat on his face. And this is when I'm kind of first starting out, so I didn't even know how to react. I said, thanks, guys. I'm Mike Keegan. I'll see you later. I'm three minutes into my set. You know, so that was, wow. yeah, it was kind of rough. That's material in itself. Exactly, exactly. And what was the most exciting moment for you? The most exciting moment for me, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, I was at the brokerage. <laughs> other, other than coming on Madhouse TV, which I always love coming down here, you guys have an awesome studio. Um, but most exciting, a couple of weeks ago, I was at the brokerage, and, uh, and the place was completely sold out. I had friends that couldn't even make it in because there, there was only standing room tickets. And it was the, the best show I've ever put on. Uh, I, you know, I got a lot of, lot of great compliments after it. And the place was just sold out, and it was electric, and that was the best feeling I've ever had on stage. Now, how do you get your material? Um, I, most of my material is about my family, my crazy, neurotic Italian family, and uh, a lot of traveling. I've done a lot of traveling. Uh, I was, when I was in college, I was able to spend a month in Belgium, I've been to London, Amsterdam. So, I, you know, just a lot of life experiences. I tell a lot of stories. And then how do you set that up? You know. uh, what I do, um, you know, I will always come up with a premise. You know, this, the premise would be, you know, I was in Amsterdam. What what kind of crazy things happened in Amsterdam? And then I'll try to, you know, just write it out, nothing funny yet. And then I'll come up with a punchline. I'll, you know, I'll research. And a lot of, the, me and a couple of, a couple of my good comic friends will go to Starbucks once or twice a week, bounce a lot of ideas off of each other. And uh, we'll be there for four hours a night and just, you know, give each other punchlines, you know, and just mess around for a while and then a lot of funny things happen there how do you get booked in different shows how does uh, that work it's all it's all networking i mean uh you know you i'll go to the open mics you know I, I live on long island i work on long island so i try to go into the city once a week and i'll try to hit four different open mics and just from going to the, just from going there you'll network you'll meet other comics who are putting together their shows or there might be a booker at the show who likes your set so it's just all networking, just trying to get on stage as much as you can, and just, you know, when people see you, they'll start booking you, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. And how many shows a day can you do in Manhattan? In Manhattan, like, I, I, you, I know people that do, f that do five or six a day. A day? And that, that live in Manhattan, they don't really have a day job, and they're doing 30 spots a week, you know, between open mics and shows. I'm able to do, I'll, I work until 5.30 on Long Island. I work right in Cedarhurst, so I'm not too far from the city. So I'll drive into the city, and I'll, I'll get up at three different clubs. I'll, uh, you know, I'll try to time it out where I can do one 6 o'clock spot, an 8 o'clock spot, and then a 10 o'clock spot. So I could do you know, three times a week I can get up in the city. And how long is your set usually? Uh, when, you, when you're doing open mics, you get between usually five and seven minutes. Uh, when I'm doing shows, you know, I've, I've got... No, I've been in comedy for two years now, so I have a solid 15 minutes that I'm really comfortable with doing. And, you know, I can go on and on, but, you know, just 15 minutes where I can, 
where I can really do my thing. And how do you get new material? Where does that come from? Uh, it know? comes from you know now now that I've now that I've been doing it, I uh, observe more like you know if you if you're a normal persons, you know living their everyday life, you know they'll see some funny things, but it won't really sink in. Now I'll let it I'll let it sink in. I'll you know I, I over I over observe things, and I always keep a pad or my voice recorder around me. And if something funny happens, I'll just you know talk into my voice recorder and then sit down and try to work something out of it. How do you handle hecklers if that happens? <laughs> Used to be not too well. Now it's now it's not too bad. I just uh, I just try to embarrass them. I tell, I just say I, I, you know I, I, a lot of times I'll just start out be like, listen, I'm doing my job up here. You're making it a lot harder. Comedians work with timing, so when we're doing, when we're timing our jokes, you know, your timing, timing, punchline, right. you know, that they're messing up your timing, and then you're, you're, throwing, you're, you off. you're throwing you off, and your delivery is not going to be great. Just tell them, listen, this is what I'm trying to do. You ruin it. You want to sit down. If they keep at it, then I'll embarrass them and try to, you know, give a little couple of digs into them and say, you know, sit down. You have no respect for yourself. You're, you're making an idiot of yourself here. And what if they don't? If they don't. Typically, security is supposed to take care of that, but if, but if they don't, then uh, you know I, I'll get kind of nasty with them, and which usually ruins a set. But but uh, I have no I have no tolerance for hecklers; they're disgusting. I understand. That. <laughs> What's the feeling like when you're feeling in the moment when you just killed it? Ah, uh, there's no better feeling. Any drug or anything you do is no better feeling than walking off stage after after killing an audience. And uh, you know all your comic friends are telling you how good you did, and you really feel it. And it's just you, there's about 20 minutes after you get on stage where you just sit this high up off the ground, and you, know, you sit at the bar and have a drink and just enjoy it. It's great. And then you're probably going to bed late that night because you're <laughs> really oh, pumped yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly. Like, you want to. And it just makes you more excited to do it again. Right. You want to go to another club right after. That. Yeah. Exa exactly. <laughs> and what's the down feeling? You know, people experience yeah. down moments. Up, and know. so it is. I've I've noticed that with comedy, the highs are really high and the lows are really low. You know, if uh, if you if you have about you know two, three, or four you know bad sets in a row, you're like, what am I doing? I, I can't do this anymore. But then you'll get that that great show coming that brings you really high up. But the the lows are pretty low. You're like, eh, you know, I can't make these people laugh. You know, what am I doing here? And, you know, because it's not easy doing comedy. You're on the road all the time. You're in your car. You're spending money on gas, spending money to get back and forth to clubs. And then it's like, what am I doing here? Every entertainer goes through that. Yeah. It's only human and natural. Exactly. And you know what? We, uh, Us as comedians, we have to dust ourselves off and just keep giving it 110%. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing. You know what? Comedy is... People don't realize it's pretty cutthroat. There's a lot of jealousy out there, so you really find a, a base group of comic friends and support each other, and that, that's what really gets you. That's through what it, it and should be, and that's what, that's, that's what we're working on together. That's what I'm trying to bring out yeah. because you know everything's all about booking, bringing money, burning money, yeah. bringing people. Exactly. And it's no feeling. It's just like the money's taking over everything, yeah, and the fun is out because everybody's going through money. Even comedians, we're going through a ton of money. Going through a ton of money, not making a ton of money yet. No. You know? So, and it's just all the the jealousy out there from other comics and trying to keep you down. So you, you find a base group of good guys that really keep you going. I call my I call Ricochet's my therapy place. Absolutely. And that's what it should be. Absolutely. It's all about having fun. Yeah, that's that's how it, that's how it is there, and that's really how it should be. In Lindenhurst. In, in Lindenhurst. Well, we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back. Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act1Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act1 will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act1Entertainment.net for a free, no-obligation price quote, or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy from the Harrison Law Group. You know, soft tissue injury, that's no joke. 
This is what we do. We're not new at this game. Don't waste valuable time going to firms who don't get it and can't do it. Call 1-800-INJURY-LAW. We're back live at, on the Frank Print Show at Madhouse TV with Mike Keegan. Oh, tell us where you're going to be and how people get in contact with you. Right. Usually the last Friday of every month, I'm over at the brokerage. Uh, John Ziegler run, runs a great show over there last Friday at 1030. Um, I'll be at Ricochet's this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And hopefully, uh, you know, every, every week coming up, I'll be doing some spots over there. August 26th, I'll be at The Stand in New York City on 3rd Avenue. Uh, it's, a, it's a Monday 8 p.m. show. Usually a lot of good comics stop by. And uh, other than that, you know, just uh, keep an eye out for my Facebook page. I always put my dates up there. Um, Mike Keegan on Facebook. And I have a Mike Keegan Comedy also on Facebook. Uh, if you want to reach me on Twitter, it's Mike C.J. Keegs. And I have, uh, you know, just my email if anyone wants to book me for pay me for a show, they can, uh, they can email me. It's mkeegs7575 at yahoo.com. Okay, you're going to do some stand-up for us. I'd be, okay. uh, it'd be my pleasure. I just want to thank you, Tommy and Tom, again for having me back. This is great. Okay, you're welcome. We'll be right back, and we're going to get them situated. S sit back and enjoy. Huntington Toyota, the experience of a lifetime. Don't take our word for it. The experience for me at Huntington Toyota made me feel very comfortable. It's their professionalism, their honesty, and their integrity. I've bought at least nine or ten cars here at Huntington Toyota. They give me the best price around. It never was about high pressure. It never was about them. It was always about us. Today's cars are very similar, but Huntington Toyota is very different. Huntington Toyota, where it's all about you. Dad, where do babies come from? Uh, oh, well, there's a, uh, th th there's Dad, it's big, shiny rocket ship. That's right, it's filled with babies, babies of all kinds. And when the shiny rocket ship penetrates, mommy and dad goes, uh, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and when the time is just oh. right, there's a space launch. All systems go. Babies of all kinds. Released all over the place. Yeah, Africa. Uh, well, mommy's baby Landia. That's right, it's filled with babies. After an amazing nine months, babies. And that, son, is where babies come from. But Jake said babies come from planet. Baby Landia. You go, play with us on the bus. Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. Wheels on the bus go round and round.
Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act1Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act1 will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act1Entertainment.net for a free, no-obligation price quote, or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, introducing comedian Mike Keegan. Take it away. All right. Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks for having me back on Madhouse TV. Very excited to be here. I uh, do most of my shows in the city, so I could like coming back to Long Island because I'm a Long Island boy, born and raised. Long Island, the proud home of me and Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan is literally one failed movie away from hanging out with me on a Friday night. You know, we just uh, go back and forth, decide which horrible bar in Hempstead Turnpike we're gonna hang out at, and have adorable little arguments over like which particular Coke dealer we're gonna use that night. But, <laughs> but. Um, you know, everyone knows how hard Lindsay Lohan fell. Everybody knows it. Like, she went from Saturday nights at the Chateau Marmont with Leonardo DiCaprio to Ten Cent Wing Night at Applebee's with Mike Keegan. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm Italian also. I live on Long Island. I'm Italian. My mother and her four sisters are all 100% Italian. So you can imagine how interesting the holidays are. So we always have, we always have Thanksgiving over at my house. And every year, my, my mother's sister, Josephine, comes over. My fat aunt, Josephine, comes over with this big giant ass that she comes over with. And uh, we can only eat the white meat because she only likes the dark meat. I call her Aunt Kardashian. She, she loves that. But uh, <laughs> my family's pretty awesome, though. We just had a, recently had a big family reunion upstate, a big neurotic Italian family reunion. And everyone knows the big centerpiece at all these reunions are the food. You know, we start like Sunday dinner and Saturday afternoon. And uh, we, uh, we, everybody knows how it works. You get the cold antipasto, the hot antipasto, then you get the meat course, the pasta course, the second meat course, second pasta course, like a 14-hour ordeal. So uh, recently after dinner now, you know, we started to get a little health conscious. So we always make sure we get a little physical activity in after dinner. So we have a big, giant backyard up there, so we always play the national sport of Italy, bocce ball. <laughs> you know, we... Uh, yeah, we think that we can burn 25,000 calories by rolling a little wooden ball 30 yards. And if you're over 50, you're not even standing up to do it. You're sitting in a lawn chair. But uh, we always have fun because my two uncles run the game every year. My Uncle Vinny and my Uncle Tuna. I call him Uncle Tuna because he's built like a tuna can. He's like three times wider than he is tall. But, uh, but uh, you know, we, uh, we play every year, and the two of them together are hilarious. Like last time we were playing... Uncle Vinny is getting ready to take his shot. Uncle Vinny's taking forever to take his shot. Uncle Tuna goes, Vin, would you take your freaking shot already? You're taking forever. Vinny goes, Tuna, my wife is right over there watching me. I got to make the perfect shot. Tuna goes, Vin, ain't no freaking way you could hit her from all the way over here. <laughs> so, yeah, they're pretty awesome. I, uh, I, I am, I'm Italian, and I, and I don't... Uh, Italian and uh, I'm not married, so I still live at home. My mother always asked me, she's like, Mike, when you get married, move out of the house. She asked me this while she's cooking my dinner, folding my laundry, and balancing my checkbook all at the same time. So you're not getting rid of me, you enabler. But <laughs> so I'm American, so I'm unemployed. And uh, unemployment's pretty awesome at first. First, you get that free check every week. I got a lot done. I got my car detailed. I caught up in my DVRs. But like, after a while, you get bored. You catch yourself doing some weird things. Like last Tuesday, I wrote a four-page letter to Tropicana Orange Juice just to let them know how much I enjoy their product. It's four pages front and back. Do you know what's weird that I, that I wrote the letter? I didn't even type it. It's like serial killer stuff. <laughs> but uh, so let's see. I told you guys that I don't have a job and I live at home. I'm also single, so congratulations, ladies. I got that trifecta pretty much covered. I, uh, I'm only recently single, though. My ex-girlfriend and I were together for eight years. We were together almost a decade. And everyone thought we were going to get married because we were such a cute couple. Like, she was beautiful. She was tall and thin. Uh, we looked like the number 10. And, <laughs> you know, now that I'm single, though, I'm back out there. I'm back on the market. I joined the gym. I joined Planet Fitness. 
which is awesome because it's only $10 a month, so I never really ever have to go. And <laughs> I never realized how big of a creep I was until I joined the gym, though. Like, I always go there, I'll, you know, make sure I'm on, a, I'm on a machine behind a girl with a nice butt and yoga pants. Or, you know, I'll, I'll go there for an hour and a half, I won't even use a machine. You know, I'll just go and I'll peer into the locker rooms and I'll sniff the stationary bicycle seats. It's a judgment-free zone, guys. You can't judge the things I do over there. <laughs> uh, but I, I never got into that mindset that people get in. Like, you know, I got to go to the gym every day. I got to go for an hour a day. Like, for example, you'll see like an older guy outside riding a bicycle. You'd be like, oh, that guy's working out. He's trying to get into shape. I'll look at him and I'll be like, I wonder how many DWIs that guy has. Get a car. But, you know, it's uh, like, you know, people, those people kind of piss me off, these cyclists. They take it so seriously. I'm going cycling. We're going cycling. They get the full Lance Armstrong spandex and the helmet. And, you know, you're riding bikes. What do you, you brag about being the world's best bike rider? I did that when I was eight and I learned how to pop a wheelie. You know, like, it's just people that take themselves too seriously and think they're better than everyone. Like uh, these people that drink a lot of wine. They know all the different vintages and styles. They call themselves wine connoisseurs. Like, you're, you're an alcoholic with money. <laughs> like, people that eat a lot of food, and uh, they, they go, you know, they, they, they eat all this food, they go home and they write about it, and they call themselves foodies. Like, you're a fat bastard with a blog. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't call Charlie Sheen a cocaine connoisseur. Kurt Cobain wasn't a heroin buff. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, I, I kind of freaked out when I lost my job, though. I wasn't used to not having a steady income. So I went, I, I applied for food stamps. They took one look at me, they gave me food posters. <laughs> but uh, you know, no matter what kind of shape you're in, though, if you want to feel good about your body, I suggest you go to a state fair in West Virginia. <laughs> I'm the skinny guy at a state fair in West Virginia. I was, uh, I was doing a show last year at a state fair in West Virginia, and I'm on my way there, I'm driving there, and I'm reading these, these crude email directions that they gave me. And the last direction said, make a left after the Italian restaurant. So I'm driving for a half hour. I can't find the Italian restaurant. I'm driving up and down the road. Finally, I call the venue. I'm like, can you at least give me the name of the Italian restaurant and, uh, so I can get to the fairgrounds? They go, oh, the Italian restaurant's name is Domino's. Domino's was their Italian restaurant in this town. So finally, I get to the fair. And when I get there, I had a little while to kill before my show. So uh, I went to, up to this booth. And what they were serving at this booth is fried butter. Fried butter is a thing in West Virginia. Now, I'm the skinny guy. They don't like the skinny guy at a state fair in West Virginia. So I'm just standing at this booth, and I'm, I'm just eating a regular stick of butter because I'm trying to be a little bit healthy. So, uh, so there's three gigantic guys sitting there shoveling fried butter in their mouths. And uh, they don't like the skinny guy. I hear all their little comments that they're making each other. Ah, would you look at Mr. Fitness over there? Walking around all unassisted like. And then like, one of them even said to the other guy, he's just like, he was like, who's he trying to impress over there eating those vegetables? I was eating a corn dog. Guys, I'm Mike Keegan. Thanks so much for having me back. I had a great time. Thank great you, job, Mike. Thank you again, Frank. We're out of time. And next week I won't be here. I have a special guest host. DJ Vinny Dice will be in the house. So watch the show at 1230. And we'll see you next week. Have a great week. You're not going to want to miss this show. Thank you, and take care.